It's interesting because another level of, of the communication that you can have and that you probably will have with Lucifer or Maimon if you begin to work with him or with any of these gatekeepers or once again with any being of real, true power is that they're also going to communicate with you through your circumstances. Cooper. Cooper. Come in, Cooper. Doris? Roger that. He survived. Somewhere. In their fifth dimension, they saved us. <laughs> what the hell is they? That you'll find challenges that are unique to the things that, are, that you were learning from that spirit will begin to pop up in your life. And that's why they want to help us, huh? I don't know, but they constructed this three-dimensional space inside their five-dimensional reality to allow you to understand it. Well, that ain't working. Yes, it is. But you will have opportunities to use the teachings that they've given you, the weapons and the tools that they hand you. You've seen that time is represented here as a physical dimension. You have worked out that you can exert a force across space-time. Gravity. To send a message. Affirmative. That none of this is idle. None of this is merely for the, the benefit of the mind to lock onto and say, you know, look what I've achieved as I've summoned a mainline. Instead, it is going to be a matter of proving what you've achieved to yourself and to the world around you, to the reality that obeys your every command. Gravity can cross the dimensions, including time. Apparently. When you're doing this black star operation, you've got to understand that, now we are in all planes at once, right? So. Not only are we in, in all planes at once, but when I was doing this black star operation, it was like certain parts of me were more solidified in certain planes. Do you have the quantum data? Roger, I have it. I am transmitting and on all wavelengths, but nothing is getting out, Cooper. You have a huge part of me which be solidified in the abyss. You have a huge part of me which was solidified in the mental plane and then back here. Do this. To such complicated data to a child. Not just any child. What else? Oh, come on, Dad. Even if you communicate it here, she won't understand its significance for years. I, I get that, Tars. All right, but we, we've got to figure something out, all right? The people on Earth are going to die. Think, think, think. Cooper, they didn't bring us here to change the past. Say that again. Yet another way that Lucifer Maimon will speak to you is through your own self, through your, through the change and the evolution that occurs within you, the enlightening of your mind, the clarification of your, your ideas, your concepts, your beliefs. They didn't bring us here to change the past. Well, they didn't bring us here at all. As you push your communication with Lucifer far enough, you're going to have a hard time distinguishing your voice from his. Well, they didn't bring us here at all. We brought ourselves. Until you realize there really is no difference that he is flowing through you and that he has taken over. It's not a ghost. It's gravity. And at that point, you can fully merge with the light and the knowledge of Lucifer. Don't you get it yet, Tars? I brought myself here. We're here to communicate with a three-dimensional world. We're the bridge. And it was as if these were like pathways. There was like a channel coming all the way through me. And I was just, I was just sat in this darkness that was outside of myself, inside myself at the same time. And I couldn't wrap my brain around this. I was like, what is going on? Because 
if I if I don't find a way how to control this, then I'm gonna lose myself to it. And that's black magic for you. And at that point you can fully embody within you the black sun, the dragon's eye. This tradition of the dragon and the sun, occasionally replaced by the moon, has awakened echoes in the remotest parts of the world. It may be accounted for with perfect readiness by the once universal heliolatrist, which means worshipping the sun, religion. There was a time when Asia, Europe, Africa, and America were covered with the temples sacred to the sun and the dragon. He said to me, become the black star. And I, you know, in the essay, I, I give the, um, the full guide on how to do this. Um, once you become this, what, what, what is called the black star, you do indeed connect to Lucifer in a very strange way. But it's not like possession. It's not like um, he's overriding you and he's overtaking you. It's more of you're shedding your skin. You're stepping into a new part of yourself, which is also a part of him. You're entering that Lucifer's quintessence. And being through that, you get to see through his eyes, almost like an invocation. And my thoughts weren't in words. My thought was just knowing. And a lot of it was, it was so much to grasp that when I actually came back to my normal state, my mundane state, I was like, what the fuck just happened there? You know, I had no idea what was going on. In a discussion of the 20th degree of the ancient accepted Scotch rite of Freemasonry, called Knight of the Sun, or Prince Adept, Albert Pike said, There is in nature one most potent force, by means whereof a single man, who could possess himself of it, and should know how to direct it, could revolutionize and change the face of the world. They didn't choose me, they chose her. For what, Cooper? <laughs> to save the world. This is the force that the Nazis and their inner occult circle were so desperately trying to unleash upon the world, for which the real society had apparently groomed Hitler. And then you can allow that reaction that occurs from the darkness and the light colliding within to create a nuclear explosion within your soul. It will send ripples through space and time and through your very being that are going to transform you and transform the world around you. It's infinitely complex. They have access to infinite time and space, but they're not bound by anything. They can't find a specific place in time. They can't communicate. So you, you have dark illumination, deconstruction process. You have empowerment like beyond what I thought would be possible in this pathway. And you're also talking about the field of your own consciousness so expanded that it's like it's overlapping with the mental plane itself. Like you're just sitting there, you're an open channel and you're just siphoning all this knowledge. You haven't even got to ask. You, sometimes you haven't even got to have the intention. You just sit there in that state as the dark star, as that black star just emanating out. And this rush and this onslaught of information is just coming in and coming in. And uh, if you haven't prepared yourself through the deconstruction process, that can lead you to insanity. Whether it's whispering voices, whether it's hallucinations, whether it's you cannot gauge what you're understanding, you've got to prepare yourself for that. And that's what the deconstruction process really is. And so everything becomes a communication from these entities. Every coincidence, every word that's spoken and heard in passing, every thought that darts through your mind, these are all Lucifer speaking to you constantly. That's why I'm here. I'm going to find a way to tell Murph, just like I found this moment. Expand your idea of communication beyond verbal so that you can receive without words, without thoughts, without mind. What are we here to do? Find out, tell her. And then allow yourself to unpack it as you go. As you experience things when you're working with these beings, 
You have to assume that these experiences and these coincidences are indeed signs and omens. That Lucifer is speaking to you and through you. The watch. That's it. We code the data into the movement of the second hand. Now, as I've received these communications, I've written them down in my journal. And some of them have come very quickly and very mm, suddenly and unprompted. So let's do this. Six plus six plus six is 18. One plus eight is nine. So the reduction in occult numerology and gematria of 666 is nine. That's what they would call the reduction. You're adding it, getting your value, and then adding the, the digits of that value until you get down to a single digit. So nine and 666 are equivalents. the data into the movement of the second hand. Let me put it this way, Mr. Amor. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. It's ours? What's your honest number? 90%. 90%. 90%. Now what, we agree 90%? You told me we had enough resources for both of us. We agree to that. 90%. Open the pod bay doors, please, Alex. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures and there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways Simjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings Armoros the resolving of enchantments but Akihal taught astrology Kokabel the constellations Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arakiel, the signs of the earth. Shamsiel, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. I am going to read to you The Ceremony of the Nine Angles by Anton LaVey. Okay, here we count. They start, he starts counting the angles. From the fifth angle are the hornless ones who raise the temple of the five trihedrons. Trihedron is some kind of shape, it's got three sides, although I'm not sure how that's possible. Of the five trihedrons unto the demons of creation, whose seal is at once four and five and nine. Four plus five equals nine. From the sixth angle is the sleep of the demons in symmetry, which doth vanquish. Uh, this book is missing cues for something, it's supposed to be vanquish which doth vanquish the five, but shall not prevail against the four and the nine. Again, we have five, four, and nine. Five plus four, you nine. From the seventh angle is the ruin of symmetry and the awakening of the demons, for the four and the nine shall prevail against the six. Okay, so four plus six equals ten, not nine. So what does, what does this mean? From the eighth angle are the masters of the realm who raise the temple of the eight trihedrons, eight three-sided shapes, unto the demons of creation, whose seal is at once four and five and nine. Four plus five equals nine. From the ninth angle is the flame of the beginning and ending of dimensions, which blazeth in brilliance and darkness and unto the glory and desire. There are nine years of secrets inside. And um, so I'm sat there and I'm gazing into this and it just opens, right? And each nine points are shining brightly. And, um, and I just feel this, this, this heavy weight manifest in this room. 
And for sure, it's, it's all the night gatekeepers. Like, you just know that. Like, you see it in your mind. You can feel it. And I've done this for enough years to trust in these instincts and trust in these sensations. I'm like, okay, all nine of the fuckers are around me. Now, great. And I'm like, I, I, I'm losing myself in the gazing of the god star. But all of a sudden, one point shines brighter than the rest. Now, this nine-pointed star and this one point is shining extremely bright. And my mind translates that to one of them is stepping forward. Out of all the nine, a certain one is stepping forward. Now, I thought it was Abaddon. I thought Abaddon was going to come to me and say, look, we're done. Go now to this and go now to that. Here's what you got to do. Mm. No, completely wrong. I was. Um, this this huge, uh, long figure just manifests here in the corner of my eye. And first off, I thought it was like a shadow manifestation where I'd look at it and it kind of go. But it wouldn't. Um, I, I gazed there and you have this long, thin being. And it's just wearing this dark purple cloak. And I'm like, okay. And, and the, the, the deeper I lose myself into it, the more the vision is coming into play, the more solidified it is. And this black onyx cow's head, this like <laughs> this ram horn in the center of his head. And I was like, who and what the fuck am I looking at? Um, because I have never seen a manifestation like that. And all of a sudden, the sigil of Lucifer is just flashing thick. And then the sigil just becomes this black star. And that's when it all kicked off. The second that my eyes met that black star, I was hooked. It was like the hypnotic light that it was emanating just pulled me right in. It was a vortex and it just sucked me right in. And it led to all this. Um, it is quite nuts. God. I also think it knows we're here. Time to unleash Chandra. We'll see if our computer brain surgeon and psychiatrist can put Hal back together again. Did it work? I think it might have. How do you know? Because the bulk beams are closing the Tesseract. Now what if we were to take the cube and extrude it and pull it through another dimension of space, which is very difficult for our three-dimensional brains to even extrapolate what it would actually somewhat look like visually is the hypercube or what's known as the tesseract the tesseract in dark occultism in particular the hypercube represents an eternal prison it's a very very concealed and high level symbol in dark occultism many times this will not ever be shown or talked about with a lower level initiate in the occult. All right, so we're talking about high level dark occult symbolism now. The hypercube's meanings or interpretation are total control, total domination, entrapment, lockdown, no escape, permanent imprisonment, I really should have wrote on here, and permanent slavery. No way out. The mind is taken. The soul is taken, it's gone. In the common tongue, it says one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. Now, in one of its 2D projections, if we rotated this in a certain way, this cube, we would get this two-dimensional pr projection of the hypercube. And you see that the 2D projection of the hypercube is outlined by an octagon. The outside edge of the 2D hypercube projection in this orientation is the hypercube. So in dark occultism, whenever you see the octagon or you see the eight-pointed star, the, the two squares laying at a 90-degree angle over top of each other, Almost invariably, you're talking about the hypercube, and it's just a two-dimensional projection or variant of the hypercube. There's no telemetry. It's all gone. So here's the, the eight-cornered hat from overhead. It's clearly an octagonal shape. 
The stop sign put on every American street corner, the red octagon. It's a symbol of the hypercube. Since no one has ever done this before, everyone up here is as scared as I am. The difference is, they're busy. I have nothing to do but wait for it to happen. I hope this is all worth it. There's the double square. Right above the goddess's head as you're standing at her feet in this temple that is the main, uh, you know, the main iconography from the outside is a huge phallic dome. Then that is the underneath side. That is the top of that phallic dome. She's standing right underneath it. And if you actually look up from the bottom at her feet, it's an octagon right above her head. So she's, she's surrounded by the octagon, octagon bottom and top. But there's nothing to that. It's just, you know, it all just worked out that way because of the architecture. No, they didn't plan any of the architecture for this building or hire some of the best, you know, stone masons and stone workers probably in this whole region of the country. You know, it's all just accidental. They happened to put the goddess there. They happened to put the double square around her. They happened to put her inside of a big phallic symbol. They happened to put the octagon directly over her head. All just happened that way. That's called coincidence theory at its finest. Oh my God. Put the telescope on the monitor. Did it work? I think it might have. How do you know? Because the bulk beams are closing the Tesseract. I don't believe it. Dr. Chandra, I detect strong vocal stress patterns. Is there a problem? No, Hal. The mission is proceeding normally. I thought you get it yet, Tars. They're not beings. They're us. So... I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Church of Satan from the standpoint of a theistic Luciferian, a uh, theistic Satanist, demon auditor, anyone who follows adversarial magic and believes that the entities he consorts with are indeed real, independent, a causal, immortal entities, which is what Anton Zandor LeVay saw Satan as being at the beginning. Multiple people have attested to that. Eventually, in 1975, after all manner of shit has gone down, uh, he reached the conclusion that the devil he has been talking to and following and listening to is merely a projection of his own subconscious mind through his magical faculties. They're not beings. They're us. His daughter, Zena LeVay, now known as Zena Shrek after she disowned him, referred to this discussion as, to this decision as asinine in a letter to Michael Aquino, the second highest ranking member of the temple, Church of Satan. What I've been doing for Murph, they're doing for me, for all of us. Cooper people couldn't build this. He decides everything's basically meaningless. He's not a real entity. He's been talking to his own head the entire time and he just starts selling the ranks in the Church of Satan. So, Michael Aquino leads a mass exodus from the Church of Satan and starts his own group. Um, recently, there was an individual by the name of Diabolus Rex who got to the third degree out of five in the Church of Satan, being a priest. He wrote, he wrote an open letter to the Church of Satan announcing his departure and saying that he could no longer accept the premise that the forces he was communing with were not their own independent eternal deities. Apparently, the experiences were too extreme for him to accept that they were just parts of his own mind. Cooper 
people couldn't build this. No, no, not yet. But one day, not you and me, but a people, a civilization that's evolved past the four dimensions we know. Alistair Crowley temporarily championed the folly that the goetic demons are merely parts of the brain, but he would later go on to renounce that. Nonetheless, many modern adversarial magicians uh, consider that to be the truth of the matter. But of course, that's up to individual opinion.